Well, thank you for that kind introduction. Good morning. Good morning, my colleagues. Are you ready to organize? Are you ready to fight? Good, because make no mistake, teachers' unions are under attack and we have to fight back. I want to thank the AFT for inviting me here today, and I want to thank every educator here, because like you, I am proud to be a teacher. And while I am happy to be in Washington, D.C., I honestly consider myself to be a teacher on special assignment to Congress. And my mission is to make sure the policymakers in D.C. understand the far-reaching effects of their policies. And I'm also proud to be a Democrat for public education. Now everyone in this room understands the failures of No Child Left Behind. If we are serious about improving our education system, Congress needs to do its job and fix No Child Left Behind. But our job is not to just fix laws like NCLB or to completely eliminate laws that are ineffective, we need to do more to transform the national conversation on K-12 education in this country. Democrats cannot allow themselves to be fooled by anti-union groups that use clever language in their propaganda and lawsuits. Right here in Los Angeles, the Vergara lawsuit used the language of civil rights in its efforts to undermine due process and tenure. That decision was misguided and too far, and frankly, that decision did not belong in the courts. It belonged in the state legislature. Now, I'm open to having conversations about tenure, how long it takes, the nature of it, but the debate should not be about whether or not it is necessary, because it is necessary. We shouldn't give school boards and superintendents the ability to fire teachers and institute their own system of political patronage or because they degree, disagree with teachers about curriculum. I have long believed that the best educators are not the teachers that simply stick to the script. The best ones are the ones that are creative and engaging. Thank you. And don't get me wrong, bad teachers must be held accountable. But the decision makers must be fair. Supporters of the Vigar decision now believe that their reform movement has the potential to be the equivalent of marriage equality and lawsuits that will spring up across the nation, which will cause the tide to shift in their favor. As the first openly gay member of Congress from California, I take exception to that whole premise. They have it backwards. The fight for marriage equality is about uh, was about giving people their civil rights. Vagar is about taking them away. After all, worker protections are civil rights. Yeah. It is a misguided fantasy of these so-called reformers to think that taking away tenure will bring about the changes they want. Let me tell you about a success story that shows just how misguided they are. More than a quarter of the Mexican-American students who passed the AP physics tests in electricity, uh, magne uh, uh, electri uh, excuse me, AP physics, electricity, and mag magnetism exam in California came from one teacher's classroom. And I'm proud to say that that classroom is in my congressional district in a public high school. It is not a private school, it is not a charter school, and most importantly, these results were not done by changing teacher tenure laws or dismantling workforce protections. What is happening in Citrus Hill High School in Paris, California can happen anywhere. And what is even more impressive is that this is a school district where 80% of the students are 
eligible for free or reduced school lunch. Why can't we take this as evidence that the public school systems are working? Why can't we take this as evidence that policymakers should be looking to teachers to lead the reform instead of interest groups? The AFT is a true American organization that improves our, educa our public education system in America. Let's elevate the conversation, let's stop the lawsuits, and let's begin to respect this profession. Thank you, and welcome to California.